Okay, I'm going to be giving you a walkthrough of my digital dash project. This is for our 1962 classic GM 4106 bus. Uh, we call it Cruising Classic, and it's powered by a mechanical Detroit diesel 6V 92TA engine. So the problems I'm solving <laughs> is that our current dashboard lacks proper alerting for oil pressure, cooling, and you know possibly other engine destroying issues. And anybody that's got one of these old classic buses can know that an engine rebuild is really expensive and cost like 20 grand. Um, as drivers, my wife and I are used to driving modern cars where we've got a dashboard that, you know, lights up and <laughs> makes noise, tells you if there's a problem. And, um, you know, neither of us is really in the habit of constantly checking a gauge as while we're driving. Um, the old mechanical Detroit doesn't have an OBD port or anything like that that we can plug in. Uh, for an app like Torque or, or Real Dash that can communicate with the computer and let you add features and stuff. And if I want to add instrumentation, I've got 35 feet of bus between the engine and the dashboard and lots of stuff in between that I need to, uh, you know, negotiate. Um, I have a current setup right now with uh, Torque and an Arduino board that I'm not really happy with. So I'm sort of, you know, moving along to a better system. However, that, that system's been fairly reliable. Um, you know, I've driven thousands of miles with that system and it has saved my butt one time so far. So the benefits of the system that I've designed are, you know, we can have modern instrument, instrumentation with configurable alerts. We can easily add gauges using software um, and adding the appropriate sensors, but really only the sending unit uh, back at the engine. Uh, we don't need to buy expensive gauges or anything like that. Um, we don't need to do any drilling or run additional wires all the way up to the dashboard. Um, I do have a compartment back by the engine where I can easily add uh, the wiring that's fairly close. Um, I can control virtual switches and relays um, using the touchscreen interface. And those switches and relays can be anywhere on the bus. And we can integrate with the RV house systems and home assistant, home automation system. So some of the challenges with this is that, um, you know, it is more complex than mechanical gauges. Um, it requires a server of sorts. Um, they're inexpensive, but uh, I'm using a Raspberry Pi. You need to have a Wi-Fi router. Um, this is probably something some of you don't have in your RV. Um, you're almost certainly not going to have it in your car unless you've got a really modern car. But heck, if you have a modern car, then you don't need this anyways. Um, this is not resistant to large electromagnetic mechanic, sorry, electromagnetic pulses, um, and this may require fiddling or you know care and feeding to get it uh, working. Uh, so this is an overview of the hardware involved and uh, some of the software. I'm using ESP eighty two sixty six. Um, node and MCU chips. Um, I'm loading them with ESP Home firmware, which is open source and free. Um, these are very affordable, um, small, and relatively easy to work with if you're familiar with any sorts of, you know, DIY electronics projects, um, Arduino, things of that nature. Uh, these are relatively easy to work with, and ESP Home uh, firmware that I'm loading on there does not require really any programming um, to configure these devices. You do, uh, you have to edit a configuration file, 
uh, but there's good documentation and lots of uh, videos and things that can tell you how to go about doing that. Uh, I'm using a Camp Pro RV style Wi-Fi wi booster. Um, this device has got a large antenna that mounts on the roof of the bus that um, serves as a booster. Uh, so when we arrive at a, a campground that has Wi-Fi available, um, this thing enables us to get Wi-Fi inside the bus. It's uh, because our bus is a large metal tube, uh, Wi-Fi signals from campgrounds don't necessarily penetrate it very well. Um, so this is something that I need anyways, and I had this before I implemented the system. Um, you know, this is a fairly basic unit. I'm not advocating for it. I'm probably going to upgrade or replace it at some point, uh, but I needed something inexpensive to sort of solve the immediate problem we had of just Wi-Fi signal strength. Um, and it's working well for that basic purpose. Um, I have a Raspberry Pi 4 um, that I loaded with uh, free open source software. I'm using Home Assistant, Node Red, and Mosquito MQTT server. Um, and the software that makes this all work um, that's custom that I wrote is uh, using Node Red. And there's a, they're called Flows. It's a Node Red flow. And uh, I have another video that goes over that and how to configure that on my YouTube channel. Um, you'll need a tablet or screen of some sort. Um, I already had a double DIN Android head unit that I'm using for testing the software. Um, ultimately, I'm going to get some screens for my dash, and um, you know, this is a this is sort of an intermediate solution. Um, you'll need to load real dash software on whatever tablet it is that you choose. Um, they support Android and iOS and Windows. Um, I, I do my development of the dashboard on Windows. The file format for real dash is the same and you can load it onto your uh, Android tablet and, uh, you know, just transport those files around just fine. And the price for that is going to vary, obviously, depending on, you know, how fancy you want to get and how expensive you want to get for that. Uh, the Real Dash software itself is very affordable. I I don't remember exactly. It was probably five or ten bucks for the pro version of that. Uh, there's a free version as well. Um, this is an overview of the sensor that I've designed. Um, so this is the ESP8266 Node MCU here. Um, it's wired up to a 16-bit analog to digital converter. Uh, this is an ADS 1115. Um, this is a very precise um, voltage to digital converter. Um, this is all mounted inside of an old DeWalt drill bit case uh, that I'm using for a project box. Um, I have a four position relay here. This relay exists because I have this system wired up to my analog gauges in my dash. And there's a normally closed and normally open position on these relays. Um, it, you know, when it's off or when it's failed, um, it defaults to being connected to the analog um, gauge in the dash. Um, eventually, if I prove this system to be reliable, I'll eliminate this relay here. Um, there's a 12 volt to 5 volt uh, buck converter underneath here. Um, so I'm, you know, that's how I'm getting, providing the power to the board here, which runs on 5 volt. Um, these gauges I'm running on 5 volts. So you know, when it's in the normally closed position, you've got 12 volt power running, passing through this relay here that's not touching the board. 
when I flip the relay to you know engage the system, those sending units are going to be receiving five volts instead of twelve. But ultimately, they're just resistors; they don't care, and that seems to work fine for me. Um, I've got schematics and instructions available on GitHub for the sensor. So that's the end of this part of it. If you want more details, I've got uh, another video that goes over the flow on, uh, on my YouTube channel. And I've got uh, all the information posted on GitHub that uh, talks about you know, how to do this and uh, some of the details involved. So I appreciate you watching. Thanks.